At IB for waves, you need to know about polarization of light and the calculation Malus's law. This is what this video is all about. So polarization can only occur in transverse waves. The light that is given off uh, in a transverse wave, which moves like so, the energy goes in, away from the light bulb, but the waves oscillate perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. That's what makes it a transverse wave. And these can oscillate either vertically or in horizontal planes. And they're good evidence for waves, uh, wave nature of light. Light likes to behave like, behave like waves sometimes. So unpolarized light like sunlight or a light bulb can be filtered using a polarizing filter so that it only gives you vertically or horizontally oscillating electromagnetic waves. And what we're actually doing is removing the electric field, either horizontally or, or vertically, of our electromagnetic wave. So here we see uh, an electromagnetic wave. And what we're doing is the horizontal polarized wave, the red one, doesn't fit through filter number one. It also doesn't make it through fil filter number two. The blue light makes it through filter number one because the, this blue light is vertically polarised and that filter allows vertically polarised light through, but filter two will not. It's kind of like posting a letter. If we're trying to post a letter this direction through filter one, it will not work. So you need to turn it sideways and then it will be able to get through. But if all that's coming through now is letters that are going this way, then uh, mailbox two or polarizing filter two will also not allow any light through. So we've filtered out 100% of the light there. An example of this is uh, polarizing sunglasses, which remove one of the planes of oscillation so that only 50% of the light gets through. As a reflected light is plain polarised, then these are extremely useful for glare. Uh, so if you're looking at the pond and you're fishing or you're in water sports and like uh, you're sailing and you don't want to be dazzled by the glare of the waves, then polarising sunglasses is the way forward. It's also how 3D movies work. So you're wearing a pair of sunglasses which has two different polarisation filters on the glasses and you're really watching have two movies at once and your brain gets a little bit confused, gives you a 3D movie. Malus's law helps us explain how intensity of light can shift as we change the polarization planes of light. So here we have an unpolarized source, which is then going to be vertically polarized. And if it hits a detector, which happens to be polarized, the light intensity is going to drop even further. So it's going to go from 100% of the light, or the luminosity, to 50% of that. And then because we're changing the angle of the detector, it will decrease even more. So here's the math. The amplitude of the uh, light is proportional to the intensity. But the amplitude square is proportional to the intensity. So therefore, the energy carried by a wave uh, directly affects its intensity. So with a bit of math here, we can compare I0, which is the intensity of light as it leaves the light bulb, to uh, the plane of polarization that the detector is at. So quick bit of math here, and we get to Malus's law. So our unpolarized source is re reduced even further when we change the angle of the detector. So the question here is, if the detector is at an angle of 25 degrees and the initial unpolarized light is at 400 watts per meter squared what is the intensity measured at the detector what is i so see if you can figure it out pause the video and then we'll have a look and here we go so the trick to this is realizing that the first filter actually decreases the intensity by 50% anyway. So what we've actually got to do is half that 400 
already before we even use that number. So only 200 watts per meter squared to make it through this first filter. Now remember, you don't square the angle. You find cos of 25 and then square that number. So here's the math. Here is the answer.